I lived in Michigan for about 18 years until I moved down here. And I got into a little trouble in Michigan. I was fighting a lot and I was being bad just through like, you know, trouble stuff and, you know, just dumb stuff. And then after, you know, dealing with like just something stupid, just like taking a cell phone, basically, you know, got all, you know, my whole circle and posse in trouble. And, you know, we did, we're through court and then, you know, luckily I got off, but it wasn't really a slap on the wrist. Like, you know, they want to punish me harsh. In Michigan, it's like, you know, a year time, but over here it's just, it's very brutal. Thank God, you know, they just gave me, like, you know, they want to teach me a lesson, you know, show me the ropes about jail. So they gave me 30 days in jail and then 18 months of probation. And then at the time, my dad was living here in um, Arizona. My mom was just, you know, fed up with me. So she sent me over here with my dad. My wife and I would uh, take in kids, you know, and my son is like, he was like bringing the dog home all the time. He'd bring <laughs> home a friend. And so my wife and I, we, 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 you know, we call it a ministry. We've been doing it for about 20 years. We would just, uh, we'd take them to Disneyland. We'd buy them clothes. We'd do whatever we could. We, okay. We'd minister to them here at the house. And then we started using boxing as a tool. And it, it was better because it attracted more people. One day, I just was walking up the street and I seen, you know, people boxing wraps on, run down the street. I was just curious. So one day, I just got off of work and I seen them running again. I was like, hey, what you guys do? Y'all box here? He's like, yeah, you know, we box right out of the backyard. He's like, oh, really? I said, like, can I join your club? Can I even talk to somebody? He's like, yeah, you know, come talk to Andrew. They come here as little gangsters sometimes with a little attitude. And you don't really want to, you know, they, you know, they come in there with that little macho thing and they don't want to laugh at the jokes and they don't want to do any of that stuff. But we persist and we begin to break them down and pretty soon they're joking with us and it's not long after that that they're telling us their story. When somebody new comes in, like, I always try to see, like, if they could do it, the boxing, if they want to do it. But also, I want to know, like, if he's, like, has any problems or something because... That's what me and my brothers do. We help other, the other kids out that have these problems that need to be helped with. I was just looking at stuff through the wrong views and doing it with the wrong people. But now, like, ever since I came to the gym, like, you know, it just helped me focus my mind and, you know, do the right things. All the way out. No, not little girl stuff like this. And they're not all going to box, but the, I think the discipline pushes them in the right direction. Here, I've learned discipline and not to be so self-centered and tight, you know, kind of like look towards other people, having fun. This, you know, this really gave me a second chance in life because I went from, you know, going through troubles and having no friends, just working, barely working, you know, at a car wash, just washing cars, not getting enough money, and they always send me home early. They come in here to help me get friends, and, you know, they kind of took me in. You struggled through the canal to have life. The struggle is necessary for your life. Here's how I view things. Your crisis will always move you towards your destiny. 
It'll remove the things and the people that you don't need. It always does. Last November, uh, I, I began to get sick. Uh, uh, during training, uh, training the boxers, I trained four or five at a time, you know, every night. Hitting the mitts could become very grueling, but my body began to react kind of funny, and I knew something was wrong, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. So, you know, my, my wife made an, an appointment for me, and uh, we went to the doctor, and uh, um, I was diagnosed with cancer. CLL leukemia. My dad getting diagnosed with cancer itself was pretty hard. It took a toll on all of us, but my dad told us to be strong and just pray. And he got me through it, man. It, did it affect the uh, boxing team? Yeah, it did. Uh, we missed uh, tournaments uh, because I was sick. Uh, I had to go through six months of chemo, and it, uh, chemo's no joke. It's, it kicked my butt. A lot of things were going through my mind. Like, I was too much, like, and my dad got me through it. Even though it was him that had it, he got me through it. It, it was uh, the, probably the hardest fight I've ever had in my life, but it wasn't the hardest thing I've ever faced. Jumping squats. You guys hold your positions. Get down, like you're sitting on a chair. When I was 13 years old, I got kicked out of my house. I stepped in the back seat of a car, and I was by myself. I got diagnosed with cancer, but I got my wife with me. Cancer hasn't been, I, it hasn't devastated me. Even at the worst that I was at, at, even my sickness. You know, I couldn't even walk at one point when I was so sick. And, and you know what? I won't let it dictate my life, man. There's no way in hell that it will dictate my life. It won't dictate how I, my emotions are. It won't dictate my feelings towards people and things. It won't dictate nothing in my life. It's not gonna stop me from doing this. Every kid that comes here, you know, we talk to them. We don't hold back, we don't hide it. We use it as a tool. And because these kids are going through something, and I tell them what I'm going through, call it testify, you can do a church, or you can do whatever, witness to whatever you want to call it, but we use it as a tool to encourage them. It rains on the good and on the bad. You know, I'm, I'm not a whiner and a complainer. It's going to rain good and, and it's going to rain bad on everybody. So the way you view it, the struggle, is the way you're going to come out of it. If you look at it bad and, and you start getting your violin out and you you know what, how you're gonna view it, life? You're gonna view life unfair. But if you view the struggle as part of your life and strength, then you'll, you'll, you'll be okay.